What is your opinion on the concept of ecumenism with the West? Okay, ecumenism. Well, I'm, I'm not a fan of ecumenism. I don't believe in ecumenism as an ism at all, right? Uh, because I believe in the church. I became Orthodox because there's one church, we say it in the creed, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That's not popular um, because we, we, don't want, we don't want one. We want, we want our own ways, right? Uh, so we don't want Christ's church, we want our own churches, um, quote-unquote. Now, what, you know, God, again, God's the master of hearts, but the problem with ecumenism is essentially it's giving a new ecclesiology. Right? It's not church ecclesiology, it's a, it's a new, new anti-church ecclesiology. It's saying that the church was broken, that the church failed. Uh, it become, I mean, men fail. There's been men that fail in the church, and women. Let's be equal because we're times equal. Men and women equally failed in the church, right? So, um, but the church, as that spiritual divine reality, never fails. Right? Christ came to establish his church against which the gates of hell will never prevail. Right? He tells you know Timothy, the church is the pillar and ground of all truth. We say in the creed, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. One because God is one. That's St. Paul says in Ephesians, there's one Lord, one baptism, one body, right? One, 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 because God is one. Holy Trinity. There's not many. He does, he's not polygamous. There's God has polygamy. That's what modern ecclesiology has a bunch of, has a bunch of brides. No, he has one bride. Um, and so moderate, you know, that's why. And so I think we have to lovingly, of course, because there has to be love. We can't be in truth. Um, and stand up, but I think it's a great, it's a great temptation, a great error, because it seems to be, it's a, it's a distorted modern love. Um, so, but the best thing that I can do is just say, no, the church is here. She's always been here. She's just here. She's, she's waiting. Everyone just come back to the church. Then we'll have unity. We just, we just come back to orthodoxy. Then we'll have unity. Um, but the modern, modern ecumenistic Spirit, I think, is, is, um, is, is not from the Spirit of Christ, not at all. I think it's a, it's a false spirit. Um, and ultimately, the goal is that it gives, us, it gives us a new, as it were, well, I'll call it an anti-church. It gives us an anti-church. If you have an anti-church, then you, you have an anti-Christ, right? Um, and so we have to be, now that doesn't mean, let's say that, and that's, the, that's this whole thing, like let's just pretend our dogmas don't matter, that we just, let's agree to disagree, relativism, syncretism, right? Let's all pray together. Now, can I, can I have, you know, should I have, yeah, should I have amicable relationships with, with people? I should, hopefully, you know. It doesn't mean I have to be, you know, no, that's different. You know, a relationship with a person is different. But when we're talking on a, on a corporate level where we're going to go act like somehow we're all part of a broken system, no, I mean, we are a bro all part of the broken system of sin, but the church is not broken. That's a heresy. The church is not broken. And so I don't need the World Council of Churches to fix that um, at all. And, uh, you know, my opinion is, is that... Um, Sure, if we want to, you know, want to reach out and want to talk and do these things, okay, it's the world we can do that, um, but it has to be done in a in a context where we're not compromising, where we're not praying together, we're not partaking in services, as it were, um, that that gives the appearance that orthodoxy is just another flavor on the choose your religion your your church, um, and then beyond. Now we see that it's moved beyond even. Even just Christian religions, we have statements from people um, saying that, oh, you know, we're all serving the same God, you know, really. And, and which is, you know, God help us. God, God will judge the human hearts, but we're not. You know, the God, the God, the Holy Trinity is, is not the same God. It's just not, that's just, the, it's not trying to be mean, it's just the reality. The Muslims themselves reject the Holy Trinity. That's not me trying to be mean, but they reject my God. So I'm not serving the same God. Modern Judaism, that is, you know, non non Christians, uh, they reject it. They reject Christ as the Messiah. They reject Christ as God. So we're not. I'm not serving the same God. I don't have the same God at all. And it's not trying to be mean. It's just the way it is. 
It doesn't mean I have to go start some kind of aggressive something against them. No, of course not. You know, but the reality remains, I don't serve. I serve the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's, that's my God. Uh, and Buddhism rejects that. All of them reject that. They're not, he's not the one true God. Now, they might include him, like especially Eastern religions, amongst the pantheon of other things. But no, he's not part of the pantheon of other little deities. He is the one true God. That's it. So I can't compromise that. Um, and, and, and so, and then of course on a Christian level, you know, I can't pretend like it's okay to believe the ever Virgin Mary wasn't ever actually ever virgin or something, you know, that's dogmatic. I can't, I can't change that for you. Um, you can't, you know, that's just an easy one to, to kind of, I mean, there's a lot of things from there, you know, I can't pretend like, you know, the philoque somehow was just a word misunderstanding and you know we're really just saying the same thing but with different words no the church fathers said differently st mark of ephesus st gregory of palamas and on and on the lists go say no this is not the way so but you know ecumenism is very arrogant because it wants to exalt itself and say oh some you know these guys were kind of narrow minded i mean it's implied the saints kind of narrow-minded. They didn't quite get it. They weren't as smart as we are today, right? St. Gregory Palamas, you know, if he was really nuanced, he would have seen beyond kind of his own prejudice and he could get along. No, you know, it's not the way it works. Um, the philoque is, is, is a heresy. I can't get around that. You know, if you want to embrace heresy, then uh, I guess knock yourself out. You know, I can't. But I'm, I'm not going to pretend like that's, you know, the same thing as truth. Heresy is not the same thing as truth. The problem with ecumenism is that it says heresy is the same as truth, and I can't say that. Um, you know. How did you become a priest, and can you please give a word to us men who are interested in becoming priests? Oh, how did, how did I become a priest? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, it's a beautiful, it's a, it's a terrible, I mean, I don't mean, you know, I mean it in a true, like, you know, it's a terrible thing. Um, to be a priest. <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful, you know, in some sense. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it, you love it, but there's, you have to talk. It's not a career, it's something you, you, just, you just bear, you know, in a good way with Christ. Because you're entering into that in some small way. Because the priesthood is Christ's. And so, you know, it's a fearful thing to be a priest. It's, it's really a fearful thing. God help us. God help us. We're, we're, we're men, you know, men who make mistakes. Hopefully we're upholding uh, church teaching as best we can. But yeah, you just if you're gonna if you wanna be a priest, then you have to be ready to suffer. Because you have to suffer with Christ for your people and for the world around you. And so, you know, and then you have to love. And you have to try to love as best you can. And that's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. And there's so many temptations, you know. There's so many temptations um, for priests to really pray for them. But if you if you're doing it, it's not a it's not a career. It's not a career. In fact, if you want a career, it's the worst career choice you could ever make in your whole life. So don't do that. You know. Um, it's it's it has to be life. And sometimes, all you, all you have is Christ. 
and, and you're, you're stripped down, stripped down to almost nothing, and left with only Christ. And, and you have to be ready for that. You have to be ready for that. You have to be ready to be rejected. You have to be ready to be persecuted. You have to be ready to love when people don't love you. You have to be ready to forgive when forgiveness is not given to you. You have to be ready to be slandered. You have to be ready to be sp spoken ill of. You have to be ready to be mocked. You have to be ready. All Christians do, but in some sense, in a more potent way, the priest has to. And that's a hard thing, and there's a temptation to shrink back from that, to shrink back from that as a priest. Uh, at least that's sometimes my temptation. But in Christ, there's life. There's life. And so you have to count the costs. You know, to be a priest, we need, we, you know, I'm not a good priest, so I'm not speaking on myself, but we need good priests. We need good priests. We need priests that are going to stand for the gospel. Bishops that'll stand for the gospel. That'll love Christ, that'll love their flock, that'll go to die for their flock. You know, like Christ, the good shepherd. Uh, and not, not just, you know, so, so God help us to do that. So God help us to do that. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, a, it's a sharing in the life, um, which should be the Christian life, but it's a sharing in that life. It's, it's, so, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's an overwhelming thing, I would say, um, to, be, to be there, to stand before the altar. You know, and, and you, 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 you struggle with, with the struggles, you, the priest struggles with the, every struggle of humanity, you know. And in some sense, standing, standing in front of the fire, the altar, sometimes just, as it were, amplifies those things in your own heart. So that, that intense, sometimes internal, you know, life uh, is, is, you know, so we have to be ready for those things. We have to be ready for those things. You have to be, um, so, so how, you know, I don't know, you know, I think it's interesting. I think, I think it was St. John Chrysostom um, speaking about marriage. He says, and it's, but it's beautiful, it's not, but he says, you know, something to the fact that, that, you know, in, you know, you're, you're a young man. You're like with my, you know, my wife, I was young, you know, she, I, I thought she was beautiful. You know, like, oh, I'm going to spend the rest of me, and you do. It's good, but you're kind of oh, you know, beautiful, you know, and, and you're that good. Hopefully, we use it in the right way as men, right? That desire in finding women beautiful, which we should. There's nothing wrong with that. It's using it correctly, right? It's not. It's not abusing it, right? Christian Christianity is the right use of things. But he says, you know, you kind of, oh, there's that love and that. Oh, she's so beautiful. I just want, and you kind of brought it, but you don't quite understand until you get into it what it means to be married, you know. And so you're kind of inter. And say, I would think the same thing sometimes with monasticism. Maybe it's a, a true thing. You kind of go, you go to the monastery, like, oh, look at these monks. They're praying. They're doing this. You know, so awesome. But you know, when you talk about, wow, the 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 real monastic struggle is is intense. Struggle doesn't mean negative. There's a there's a beauty of life. Life is in that world. There's a struggle to it. And in marriage, there's that same thing. You get into marriage, you're like, wow, she's beautiful. I love her, all these things, she, you know. And you're, but then you're like, oh, wait, now I have to sacrifice for her, you know. Now I have to do this for her, you know what I mean? Now, wait, I'm, so then, but then you find this whole dynamic that almost, I mean, you're kind of aware of, but you don't, you, you get into it, you go, oh, wow. And then when you're able to, when you learn together, then it begins to work. But you get married almost, not quite under like what I know about being married now after twenty um, eight years almost of being married to my wife is you know so drastically different than when I entered into it right I think being a priest it's it's similar you look and you have that desire so you have 
with this. Oh, I want to, you know, just I think are good things. I want to serve God. I'm everybody. But once you, when you enter into it, so you 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 enter into it kind of like marriage, because priesthood is. You kind of, you know, I mean, you're bound to the altar. You're bound to Christ. Um, but then the more you go in, the deeper you get. You realize, wow. So you're kind of Saint Saint John says you're kind of lured into marriage. Not quite lured. I forgot exactly the word, but it's the, the fact you're like lured into marriage by like the the beauty and the pleasure of your wife and their desire for her, you know, which is a good thing, rightly used. And then the priesthood, it's just something like, oh, look at that, serving. You know, you, you have a good desire for that, but then you get in and you're like, wow, okay, but this this is something so much deeper. You know, this is this is. This is something that is, is is so much profound, and 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 you know the more I the more I'm a priest, um, the more, you know I, I don't know I'm not trying to be you know overly dramatic or put on any kind of pretenses, but the more I'm a priest, the more I, I realize how how unworthy I am to be a priest. <laughs>